now we're ready to start the configuration of our first highly available virtual machine we have a cluster with two nodes four disks of which one is a cluster share volume which we'll use for live migration and two other uh, normal uh, cluster volume which we'll use for quick migration on the other hand the cluster unfortunately has got just the one network because that's what I have to work with our recommendation would be that you have a public network for access to the cluster from your workstations a private cluster heartbeat network and if you're using iSCSI dedicated iSCSI adapters uh, too uh, for connecting to your iSCSI target so now let's go ahead and configure our first virtual machine the first thing to take into account is that for a failover to occur correctly before you do anything else you have to uh, set up your network configuration within the Hyper-V host to be exactly the same so in my case I have set up on both machines two networks one called private it's just a private virtual machine network and one called public which is an external network since I have just the one card I have to allow the management operating system to also use that card so once our networks are taken care of on both nodes same configuration we can go ahead and use our Hyper-V manager to create a virtual machine we just follow the standard step so we do new virtual machine let's call it XP test VM 2 we want to make sure that we select the appropriate volume for um, live migration so the cluster share volume which is mounted by default on the C drive of my computer in cluster storage volume 1 I already have another virtual machine which we'll see later so we select this folder and create a machine called XP test uh, VM2 which will create a subfolder called XP test VM2 in C cluster storage volume 1 for live migration 512 megabytes are going to be sufficient we want our virtual machines to be connected to the public network for instance and we want to create a new virtual hard disk and 20 gigabytes will be more than sufficient I also want to install an operating system from an image file now I am actually making a mistake on purpose to show you what the report shows so I will select one of the ISO files that I've got available which is XP click next note that I don't want to start the virtual machine after it's created I need to make it highly available first so I just click finish right here this will create the disk and create my virtual machine on GM host 1 at this point I need to go and reconfigure the automatic start action for uh, the virtual machine that I want to be highly available so I just go on settings click on my automatic start action panel and select nothing so I don't want the automatic start action setting for a virtual machine to conflict with the automatic restart or not automatic restart depending on what we configure of my uh, failover manager so I just select it to nothing and the automatic stop action can be uh, safely kept as a saving, saving of the virtual machine state so I click OK 
Now I want to make my virtual machine XP test VM2 highly available. And in order to do that, I'll go to my failover cluster manager, which is here. Services and application. I have one that I've already configured before. And right click, configure a service or application. This brings me to the high availability wizard. I click next there and I select a virtual machine to configure. Then click next. My virtual machine that is just been configured is listed there. I click next here. This asks for confirmation and configures the cluster resources for high availability. Now note that I have a warning in my uh, end result here. So I go and click view report and go find my warning. The warning points to the ISO file that I've selected and it tells me that it's not on a share path visible by both machines at the same time. So um, that gives you an example of the validation tests that are done when you create this resource. Of course, if you wanted to uh, leave that ISO file accessible at all times, you would need to put it on a share uh, somewhere that's accessible by both servers. Uh, in my case, I just need to use it to install the virtual machine and uh, I can then leave it where it is. So I now have my uh, virtual machine here. I can click finish and I can see that my second virtual machine is now um, registered.